Right, start of another week. So today week commencing Monday 17th of May, which is a significant date because uh, it's like the next stage of unlocking of code restrictions. So you can drink inside of pubs now and drink lots of like theatres and cinemas and stuff are open. So I think now we're at the same level of restrictions as like last summer, like August, September, October, where the CX kind of really picked up a bit. So I'm hoping the same thing is going to happen. Fingers crossed and all that lot. Um, yeah, so first thing, fuel price as ever, UK fuels, which is the shell card through them, um, 102.84, and the BWOC or BWOC, uh, which is the one that uses the key fuels network, 101.65. So I'll be using the BWOC card this week. Uh, with the VAT, that's 121.98, I call it 122, which is pretty good for branded fuel. So with that one, it's mainly BP, Texaco, Esso. Uh, yeah, so that's my fuel prices. And the Eagle Eye amongst you will notice I'm not actually in my van. Um, that behind me isn't my bulkhead. That is actually the view from T-Bay Services. So yeah, you've got kind of in the distance, you've got the Pennines, beautiful area up here, but this is not in my normal area, so how the hell have I got here? Um, today's actually gone really well. Um, I started looking for jobs about quarter past nine, which isn't too bad for me on a Monday morning when I'm at home. Um, got my first job quarter past ten. It was a regular, comp kind of a regular company, the company I did the government food deliveries for last July and a bit of June, as most all of July. Um, so they normally put their jobs on a WhatsApp group, but this one wasn't. It was posted straight onto the CX. I bid on it and got it. It was five miles from home, long wheelbase job, 1.1 tonnes, going to sort of Huddersfield area. Um, there was 96 miles loaded, quoted 95, got it. Pickup was a bit of a mare because it's picking up lengths of steel work, stainless steel, and then lengths of decking timber or decking laminate. Um, got that one on board, took 45 minutes to get loaded because they weren't ready really. Um, and I had to help out, like getting it out of the racks and stuff in their warehouse. Um, but I don't mind mucking in with that kind of stuff. It's all part of the job, makes it a bit more interesting. Pretty sound guy to pick up. And it wasn't actually in Huddersfield itself. It was some big grand house, um, like just outside of Huddersfield, um, like a proper nice pad. Um, not like a stately home, like not um, Downton Abbey style or anything, but a proper big grand house. I'd say like 1800s sandstone, a bigger house on top of a hill, surrounded by woodlands, big gated drive going up through the woods to it cracking view at the top over like the, the hills in that area and met two guys there on the builders I think they were chippies or carpenters um, and I, I couldn't help but ask so, so I commented about the house so there all right okay I'll read I'll read a lot made their money uh, it turns out he's the son of the guy who set up Poundland and they sold Poundland Pound land, and you reckon this guy got 220 million or something daft like that. So that's why they got such a swanky house and they're paying for expensive, presumably expensive oak summer houses in the gardens with a big decking area. That's what this stuff was for. I did the job, even though it's 45 minutes to pick up, it was only like a quarter of an hour. The two guys helped handball it off. It's like between the two, it was about an hour, so I didn't bother charging any. Um, Handball, um, but the lady, the, the shipper, she said, put on the notes, I will pay extra handball if there is any. So she actually rang me up after the fair play and says, was there any handball? And I says, yeah, there's quite a bit actually. And she says, all right, um, stick another tenner on because I'll charge the customer anyway. So that's quite handy, quite nice. So that took it to 105 quid for five miles to get there and 96, 101 miles. So it's over a quid a mile. Packed up just down the road, bid on a few jobs. Um, they both rang me actually, but the, thank God the one who I want, really wanted to rang me just before the other one, so I got this job. Um, 
this job first came up it was Halifax to Carlisle and I dismissed it because I thought I'm not going to Carlisle because it's middle of nowhere I was halfway to Scotland you know what I mean it's love going up here but yeah so I didn't even really look at it just like dismissed it that's why I'd left to get it off my feed drop down and menu at the top of my phone and then it went up again so I thought oh, I'll, I'll just check it just to see just curious really and it turned out to be a wait and return so that's the thing really when you got to be careful a job might seem like it's going to somewhere in the middle of nowhere the people just dismiss it including myself sometimes it turns out it's a wait and return so it's like a cracking job um, so it's showing 139 miles one way and it's wait and return I was 10 miles from it so I worked out like 85 pence a mile both ways plus getting there 10 miles came out like 245 so it's winning at 247 I think something like that and I got it um, and it turns out it wasn't a big rush to get there because I couldn't do the weight the, the drop and the pickup until after six and I went a different way so the, app, the CX app was sending me M62 and then kind of like out all the way up the M6 from sort of northwest that was 139 miles but going more direct up the A65 was 117 miles on the way up and on the way down which I'm doing now it's going to be 111 miles so that's shaved a lot off um, and that A65 what a beautiful road from like got past Keeley or Keefley whatever it's called a yeah, beautiful countryside and I love this section of the M6 don't get a chance to come up here so yeah really good day today feeling it today which is good um, and all it was was signs so I picked up some sign big sign posts that are like 3.4 meters long with like a, bot a flange on the bottom to be bolted to the ground and two blank signs and I've collected I don't normally show loads but you can see I got Try not to show the details, a big ass one up there and some smaller ones down there. It's that big one I've just had to strap up against the side because it's too wide to um, fit things. So, yeah, so I got it up to Carlisle, did the swap, got some chips again. Um, and on the way down, I also just stopped at T Bay service to film this. So I thought I'd film it here rather than in the dark in the van and have a bit of a break. Gonna crack on now down to yeah, sort of Halifax. It's slightly different drop. It's like just the pickup was HX4. This is HX3, but it looks like it's the same sort of company, about the same company I'm dropping off to. So yeah, it's a good start to the week. So it's I worked it out. It's 352 pounds for the day, and the rate is what 105 pence point something all in for the day is going to be. So. That is a, f a cracking start to the week, so good if the rest of the week went as well or close to as well as today, I'll be uh, I'll be laughing. Right, Tuesday now, 23 minutes past six. Um, yeah, so I got that job off this morning, um, so it was dropped between half eight and half nine, and I was done by quarter to nine, um, so I did count that as yesterday's job. If I'm tipped before nine, or the tip is you know arrived nine or earlier, I generally count that as a previous day's job um, for the figures. If it's more than that, it's kind of overlapping on the days in my view. Um, as you saw in the back of the van last night, I was thinking last night I would have had to um, hotel it because uh, I didn't know how full the van would be. But as it turned out, with them signs, I just put them all to one side. Um, I just kept in the van. Um, which is all right, so I'm going to get a hotel. I prefer to get it more towards the middle of the week so you can get showered sort of middle of the week without searching out um, services and all that crap. Um, yeah, anyway, so yeah, I got that done. Um, took a little while to get my next job, even though there's plenty of jobs pinging up in that northern belt, as I think of it. Um, uh, it was a job. I got it quarter past ten, I think I got it. Um, turned out to be just over four hours it took it was a real straightforward on and off load job it was down to it's from Halifax not far from where it was like uh, it's HX4 down to Cambridge just north of Cambridge from the outskirts of Cambridge to some two packets of 
cardboard boxes, packaging um, to a food manufacturing place. Yeah, let's go to Cambridge, got that tipped. So I've done that by like quarter past two. Uh, bid on a fair, well I say a fair few, there were not many jobs were pinging up around here to be honest. I was a bit surprised how quiet it was. Because my catchment area was going as far as like Stevenage and stuff like that. Um, Bishop Stortford, show sure seen looting jobs and stuff. And it was just quite slow, I was quite shocked how quiet it was down there. Um, down here should I say. In the end, while I was waiting I got in the back of the van and I'm still slowly, when I order something that comes with bubble wrap, I'm using that to fill in some of the voids and the pillars to insulate it further. Plenty of time before I finish the insulation, got to make sure it's 100% done before next winter, but summer ain't here yet. Ain't here yet. Yeah, so I did bid on a few jobs, didn't get many of them, but I got one now for the morning um, from Haverhill, which is sort of like southeast of Cambridge. And I've priced it, getting there and then getting to a tip in Kettering, um, 85p a mile all the way through. So it's like 60 odd miles, 77 quid I went in, got the job. Not picking up till nine, which is a bit later than ideal. Um, so yeah, got that to do in the morning and then I've hoteled it tonight. So I am in Cambridge itself. I'm not far from the city centre here really. Um, Book myself into like a guest house so it's 40 quid which is kind of like top end of what i want to pay really but prices are going up now we're coming out of lockdown this is quite central in cambridge so i could have gone in but parking outside on a single yellow doesn't start isn't free until half six so i've actually parked here since like 10 to 6 but i don't want to just chance it and leave it so i'm kind of sat in a van and if i see someone coming an inspector i'll around the block whatever but almost time to go in get showered and i'm gonna have a take this opportunity to have a walk around cambridge never really checked out cambridge city center and the river and stuff so i'll try and take a few photos and put them after this so one job obviously 157 for the day it was like 92 pence a mile for today um, it's not a great day but i had a good day yesterday a really good say an excellent day yesterday so i'm kind of ahead of where I have been um, and I've worked out the pence per mile so far is about 98 pence a mile all in since I left the house on Monday loaded and unloaded so yeah it's going all right this week hoping to have a good night's sleep tonight um, got a bit of a bad shoulder like neck I woke up with it Monday morning so I don't know what I did to myself on the weekend I just woke up really sore so I didn't sleep great in the back of the van last night hopefully a proper bed will get a decent night's sleep um, yeah, so that's the week so far. Um, bit knackered now. To be honest, I'd rather just go. In some ways, I like just go to my room, get showered, get something to eat, and just mount, and just watch crap on the TV. But um, yeah, can't pass the opportunity up really to have a good look. What's this guy doing now? He's trying to squeeze on the yellows where I want to be. Anyway, so that's Tuesday done. More later. Excuse me. Right, Wednesday afternoon now, <clears throat> quarter past seven. Um, yeah, so quite a good time in uh, Cambridge last night. Uh, actually went to get a Chinese and um, they've obviously opened the restaurants and stuff now. So I just thought, bugger it, I'm going to uh, sit inside rather than eating it out on the foil tray or whatever. Or a plastic tray. Uh, so I went and sat down, cost a little bit more, but yeah, it was quite nice. Um, last night was a bit of a treat really, so did that. Um, and I walked into town um, around a lot of the old part of Cambridge, King's College, Trinity College and all this stuff. Uh, some fantastic buildings and architecture, obviously. Some of them buildings are from like the 1300s or like parts of them are. Um, just, yeah, very picturesque, beautiful town. I mean, it's a big tourist attraction in it. So just getting a few hours just to have a look around. Yeah, really enjoyed that so doing quite well so far this week on the um, scenery <coughs> side of things yeah so back to the hotel I'm now watching TV got to bed decent night's sleep um, 
I actually woke up early enough this morning to go for a run because there was um, like a green area park across away from the hotel or guest house um, and I thought if I don't go for a run now when I can get showered straight after you know I'm, I'm never going to get a midweek run in so yeah I got up early enough to got a run in 15 minute run around the park pretty brisk um, back had a shower just getting ready to go and then there was quite a bit of drama this was what happened oh this is <coughs> This is the result of what happened. <coughs> Sorry. Right, yeah, so I was pretty much ready to leave the hotel, packed up and stuff, all showered. Just had to brush my teeth and then put my wash bag away and get going. And then the fire alarm goes, starts going off, and I thought, oh, great. So I just grabbed my wash bag, chucked it in my bag, get out of there, because I thought, you know, I don't want to leave my stuff here, because I'll be stood outside and might be late for this job. I know you're supposed to get straight out, but, like, Literally, it took me 30 seconds, if that. Um, and then I got outside, got to the van, and the phone rings, and it's the lady from the hotel, or the guest house. Um, and it's one of these self-checking guest houses, so there's no staff on site. I think that if there's a problem, there's someone quite close, and they probably look after a few premises. Um, and she rings me and says, oh, uh, can you go in and press the... Uh, press the the cancel button or the reset button on the fire alarm. And I was thinking, well, I said, should I really do that? You know, I, what was if it's a fire? Um, she says, well, if it's a fire, you'll see it. And I'm like, all right, I'll go and have a look. So I went and pressed this button and it said it wouldn't let me do it anyway because you have to have a code. Fair enough, which is, you know, to, to reset the alarm, you have to have a code to do it. Just to stop anyone doing it, it's a bit dodgy being asked that really. Um, but when I pressed it, asked for this code and it said where the fault was and it said first floor room five <coughs> which is the room I was in and I knew there wasn't a fire there because I'd just obviously in there um, I went and double checked anyway um, and all I'd, all I'd done that morning was go to the shower and the shower was like a shared shower I think that's partly why it was only 40 quid the room it's a single room so there was no steam from a shower or anything but I boiled a kettle to have a cup of coffee and I'd sprayed some you know antiperspirant um not deodorant but antiperspirant so I stay fresher for longer kind of thing it's quite hard to come by showers doing this as I do um <coughs> so yeah I tried to reset it and somebody else was trying to reset it and I just said I've got to get to work now um you know they'll just have to sort it so, yeah, no, yeah, sorry if that major jump. Uh, it was a phone call from a shipper. Got a job booked in for the morning. But anyway, yeah. So yeah, I'd said to them, I've got to leave. Um, and then just as I kind of walking back to the van, noticed across the way, so I said there was a big green like park area outside this guest house. On the other side was the Cambridge Fire Station, big building. And what pulled out there? A fire, fire engine. There's only one place I thought they're going. Um, well, it could be, in, but like a good chance it's going to be coming to, to us where we were. So I thought, like, get in the van and get the hell out of there because it's parked outside. I don't want to get penned in if it parks outside the, the place, it could have penned me in. So, mad rush, jump in the van, get going down the road before it turns up, get to the end of the road to dead end. So, I had to do a three point turn and go back past the guest house. And it was that fire engine was parked slap bang at the front. So you can't say, excuse me, I need to get past, I need to get to work, kind of thing. So I just had to sit and wait there. Um, got going in like the nick of time, really, because I made the tip. The collection was at nine, and I made it just about on time. Give or take a few minutes, I suppose. Uh, yeah, so that was uh, the bit of drama this morning. Got to this pickup um, at two minutes past nine. Um, and... Yeah, a bit of a bit of a pain this one. Didn't get away until twenty past ten. First issue was the reference number they gave me, the gatehouse didn't recognise it, it was only four digit, need to be eight. So to phone the shipper up again. Turns out I wasn't making like a normal collection, I was collecting some goods that had been refused or rejected. Um so that's why we there was this confusion or something. So I didn't get on site for quite a while, they were pretty slow there. So it was an hour and 20 minutes, and I was talking to the shipper throughout this. 
So when I was finally loaded and stuff, I rang up. And what I like to do when it's it's good, I was going to charge waiting time for this because obviously an hour and twenty just on a pickup. Whereas I count six thirty minutes each or sixty minutes between the two. I'm a bit flexible, so if it's forty five minutes to pick up but only fifteen to drop, that's fair enough. But this was one hour twenty just on a thing, so I was like, I always like to hint kind of thing, just say, well, I've been at the pickup now for one hour twenty. I include an hour all in for both ends. And normally they'll bite and kind of go, yeah, okay, we'll sort that out. out some waiting time and stuff. But this one, you know, you just kind of like nudging them a minute, and they just kind of this one it was just didn't say anything. So in the end, I just says, well, I'll be um, I have to talk to you the other end because um, there'll be some waiting time because I'm already over my included amount. And then she's like, oh yeah, they're fine. The other end, it's our customer. They'll get you off quick. So I still didn't mention over the uh, waiting time. So I just had to come out and say you know i'm gonna have to charge waiting time in this and then so oh right yes yes just speak to us when you get to the other end and you're sorted turns out the other end wasn't particularly quick it was like 25 minutes um big transport company see their trucks on the road all over the uk um i picked up from some massive like chemicals some kind of flavorings and something to do with food i think um one pallet's 600 kilograms was it It it's actually a medium wheel based job yeah so eventually got that one off uh, and then i rang the shipper just before i closed the job down um so it was now in 45 so it should have been an extra 15 quid really because it's an extra 45 minutes but i just said tenner um and they were fine with that actually and then she says what are you doing now have you got a job uh i was like uh, no, nothing lined up what have you got um, and she had a pickup for the same transport company I just dropped to because they were the customer for the morning job. It was the drop that I'd, the tip that I'd arranged the um, job, not the collection, which is obviously part of the problem. Um, but it wasn't from their premises, it was Northampton, 12 miles down the road. That's a 135 mile job, she said. So I says, I'll do it for a pound a mile. She said we need two vans, one's two pallets and 1,300 kilograms, and the other pallet, the other job is one pallet and 600 kilograms. So I said, well, I can't take 1,300 kilograms in this van. Like, no van can take, no three and a half ton van can take 1,300 kilograms. That's my state on it. This van's one of the best vans you can get payload wise. And I'm hesitant to go up to 1,200, 1,100 I'm comfortable with. I need to, still need to get it on a way bridge. But anyway, I got the 600 kilogram one pallet one. Turns out I did a job for these a few weeks ago. It's back to the same place, some packaging place. Um, last time I was there from there, if you've watched the vlog, it was the, um, the packaging, like the wrap, which turned gets turned into bags of chicken drumsticks. I think that was two kilogram chicken drumstick frozen. One of the big supermarkets. This was grapes. So similar stuff it's on a roll so if you buy grapes in like them plastic punnet tubs it's not the tub bit but the thin plastic bit on the top that will say the supermarket price and grapes and where they're from and stuff that little thin bit that you peel off it was um rolls of that to normanton which is sort of leeds way wakefield ish that was really quick pickup like 10 minutes drop was 10 minutes um so that worked out quite well and then so i tipped there about half three uh so it was to not be an 87 for the first job with an extra tenner second job was 135 so that's 222 up to that point and i thought well that's not too bad today and then a job pinged up from it was pick up before five by that point it was like quarter past four or something yeah um going to liverpool short wheel based job 71 miles i just went in at 71 quid which was with the getting their miles worked out at 85 pence a mile four miles um got the job had to get to the place quick because it's shutting at five um got their quarter to five um, it was one of these tool hire places or equipment hire places. I just picked up a set of ladders, 
delivered them to Liverpool, L1, some burger bar. Um, got, I couldn't deliver till nine or after nine. Um, and when I got there, the fitters that weren't there, but one of the um, people who worked in the shop um, in the burger bar signed for it, so that was all right. Obviously, nine o'clock, um, it's pretty quiet in town anyway, so not too bad. Had a bit of time to kill, so I went and got myself chicken biryani, which is where I filmed that last bit. Um, I had a leisurely drive over here, filled up with diesel, did the tip just after nine, like ten past nine, because it said after nine, so I didn't want to get there bang on nine, we would be in the centre of town. Double yellow, straight outside the store, tipped within five minutes. Uh, yeah, so I decided now I'm going to, I moved about a mile and a half down the road from that, so I'm still really central in Liverpool, not far from the docks. Um, so several weeks ago I delivered to Liverpool to one of these units here. Um, and I kind of clocked the place as a good place to tramp in Liverpool. Um, so that's what I'm doing tonight. And then a pickup I got in the morning, which was that job. It's from L7, which I don't think is too far from here. Um, it's a long wheelbase job going down to three drops, one in Swindon area and then two in Bath. I think it's BA12 and BA14. Um, I was just that was like 211 miles or something. I'd gone in at 207, or was it might have been 220 miles going in at 207, but I'm not far from it. So I think I priced it all in with getting there, it's going to be over 90 pence a mile. Got it. It is free drops. Um, with this one, it says pick up between six and eight. And he says, What time do you want to pick it up? And I just said seven. Um, six is a bit early for me, to be honest. I know um, if you watch Pete's vlog, he likes to get a real early one on board, but I'm not really a morning person. And I'm doing all right this week. So I've been for a walk, put a few things on here now um, around Liverpool, the docks, sort of the posh end, you know, the bit that's all shops and bars and touristy which is kind of like further down the Mersey for me like over my shoulder and then if I go the other way docks from here out to sea it gets kind of that's the industrial part of the dock still yeah so that's it a uh, bit of a long update just then I'm trying to keep this short but anyway that's as far as Wednesday Right, uh, yeah, Thursday, 8 o'clock now, I've just gone, um, yeah, that job this morning uh, went about as well as it could really, got there just before 7, out of the place by 10 past 7, straight run down the south, um, first drop in Devizes, then Trowbridge, then Warminster, um, yeah, each of the drop was like 10 minutes, it was just walking, someone there straight away. It was actually delivering to sort of um, Alzheimer's support centres, um, and it was like you know NHS thing, um, and it was two boxes for each one. One was a box of rapid flow tests, which is you know the instant COVID test, but it isn't so reliable. And I think the other box was the ones that you have to send away, the PCR, the actual really accurate one. There's two boxes for each one. This is a small, it was down as a long wheelbase job, but really it was a small van job. I mean, it was like six six boxes, like 10 kilograms a box. Um, I'm not complaining, like, but it is government money at the end of the day. So, um, NHS test and trace on the boxes. We do waste a lot of money. Um, but it's not, it's not uncommon in a long wheelbase job to turn up for stuff. Like it could be in a smaller van, but you just don't say anything because the shipper maybe you know can charge more or they might just ask for a van so they'll just send in a big van anyway yeah so real nice drive down no traffic particularly nice from Swindon to Devizes lovely country rolling countryside there that's it um, and then later on sort of by on the way to the last drop um, Got to see that big white horse 
on the on the one of the side of the hills, the downs. Um, get what it's called. <coughs> Only just about saw it, sort of thing. Glimpsed it through the uh, through the hedgerow, um, but, but I saw it still. Um, yeah, got that one off. Um, and then it's kind of like in the warmest, there's a bit of a quiet part of the world out of thought. Um, so I looked on the map, Google map on Earthview, what's around there. There's actually a surprising amount of like industrial sites around there. And in Warminster itself, there's, I looked on Google maps, there's Babcock, which are like a big defense company. Um, and I could see on Google maps, lots of, um, tanks and stuff. Cause obviously the army's pretty big down at that part of the world, Salisbury and Salisbury Plain and I got a mate who's in the army and he was based sort of Salisbury Tidworth for a good few years. Anyway, yeah, so got that done. There were jobs pinging up, but it seemed to be just a bit too far from them. And then a small van job pinged up from like, what was it, like 20 minutes away, 25 minutes, just sort of to the east of Bath, going to the middle of Bristol BS1. So I went for it, 40 quid, 35 miles, and got it. Um, turned out just to be like a little package, a little plastic envelope um, that was delivering or picked up in some like storage place, file storage place and delivered it to a hospital, which I thought might be a bit of a pain, eye hospital in the middle of Bristol, but it was all right. As in, it was easy to park, but getting there, took getting into like the um, east end of Bristol down the A4 was very slow. Um, and then Google Maps tried to send me the wrong way down the one-way system, so I had to just sort of go the opposite direction, and then just make it up, and then park up and work out a different route. Got it done in the end. And that was it for today's job. So I, I got moved up the M23, I think it is, to the Tesco's, just parked up there for a while. Bit, bit slow in the afternoon, the M feed, um, which I've noticed, but still doing all right. Um, and then a bid on the job for the morning, but the pickup is like down in Yeovil way, um, and it's dropping off, so I'm quite far from it, um, like 48 miles from pickup, and it's 132 mile job um, to Banbury. So I quoted 157, which is just over 85 pence a mile. And I was thinking I put a bid on this because. It's a long wheelbase job. I thought, you know, they're not going to get many bids down there. And even though it's expensive because I'm far away, I'll put cheeky. It's kind of cheeky, but it's kind of not because it's obviously miles to get there. Um, and it's at least giving them the option. Um, one of the big national shippers, they phoned me up and says, uh, yeah, I've seen your bid. Uh, we normally only pay like one pound a mile long wheelbase. And I says, yeah, I can't do it for that because I'm in Bristol. Um, so I just put, you know, put a bid on what I can do it. Just give it the option, um, and he's like, "Yeah, okay, fair enough. I see where you're coming from. Um, gonna have to see if I get a price, better price." And then he reposted a job, so I went in at one fifty. I looked at it again because um, one five three is eighty five pence a mile, all in, loaded on and loaded, including the long ride driver. Got it for one fifty. Um, so it's picking up at seven tomorrow. So another early start. So it's 8 o'clock now, it's an hour and a half drive down to there, one hour and 20 minutes from here. So I'm going to drive down this evening, pick up 7 in the morning, um, get that done by sort of 10, half 10, maybe 11. Banbury's Friday tomorrow, Banbury's not all that far from me really. Um, and we'll, Banbury's also an Amazon place, so I, if I could do an early afternoon Amazon block, local one, they pay they struggle in Banbury and it's generally better rates I could just do that and then just call it call it a week because not including job tomorrow which is 150 so just the jobs I've done so far I've done just over 200 pound well I've done 1050 or 1049 which is kind of what I've been doing over five days but I've done it in four days this week so definitely a a good week this week so far um, in terms of earnings and also just in like enjoying it this week been to some nice places nice countryside you know Carlisle Cambridge Liverpool docks nice bit of countryside today and I'll see some nice countryside tomorrow morning if the weather isn't too shocking um, 
bit of a bit windy, a bit stormy at the moment. Um, yeah, so that's it. So, yeah, doing alright so far this week. Uh, yeah, anyway, that's it so far. Right, last on the run update um, for the week. So it's just gone one o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, right, I tramped in lay by last night. Uh, just sort of like just on the outskirts of this small town I was picking up from Sherborne, Sherborne it was, or Sherborne um, by Yeovil. Picking up from some big like food place. Um, it was one pallet of peanuts, but like packaged in you know, little bags, packets you'd buy them in. Um, two pallets that were kind of stacked on top of each other of gluten free breadcrumbs and one pallet of, well, it was kind of like a half pallet really not stacked very high of um, cashew nuts. The peanuts one was pretty tall, so it's tight squeeze to get in the van. Uh, got loaded 25 minutes. One of his jobs where you turn up and they're like, uh, oh, finally, where have you been? These have been supposed to be picked up three days ago. And I'm like, I don't know, mate, I'm just a driver. Um, I only got the job last night. <laughs> That's what I just say in them situations. Um, got loaded. Nice drive up here. Beautiful countryside, even though the weather's pretty shocking today. Uh, very windy and wet today. Um, I think it's the Mendip Hills, that sort of area. Really beautiful. And then through Cotswolds, you know, the um, Cotswolds, the um, Oxfordshire. I actually went a different way, so it, was, it did take a bit longer to get here. Probably about a quarter of an hour. But instead of being 132 miles, it was like 112, so it's 20 miles shorter. And it was pick up between 7 and 9. And I was there just before 7, so I thought I'm picking it up early. Surely that's going to be okay. Um, and it was a much nicer drive. So with the getting there miles, which is 48, that's 160, so 150 for 160 miles. So that's a lot better. Um, this end, the Banbury end, is delivering to some big like distribution hub centre for a mail order sort of um, grocery company if you drive up now the m40 you'll see it um and they were taking the piss a bit there really went to the goods in office says yeah go to bay 22 go there there's a van a truck getting loaded oh he's, he's waiting to get loaded and then i sat there and a couple of other vans turned up and i think they just just got forgotten about to be honest i was there an hour and a quarter but i didn't charge um push for waiting time because I'd obviously come a shorter route you know added time on a bit of time on so the pounds per mile was better and even though the job didn't work out great from what I quoted because it was, I was so far from it they were still paying the quote the job was 132 miles loaded on the CX and I was getting 150 quid for it so I think it's a bit, a bit cheeky to possibly <laughs> ask and it's a Friday and it can't be bothered um, so got that done and while I was waiting, um, there's an Amazon delivery hub place depot in Banbury to have worked from. I used to do a fair bit of work from the car before I got the vans, joined the CX and all that stuff. Um, yeah, I thought I might do some Amazon, so I checked on there because they were struggling in Banbury to get drivers. Uh, and there was a job sort of early afternoon, 1.45, which means I can collect it at 1.30, so I'm going to head off shortly. Um, and at that time of the day, it tends to be the Amazon standard delivery packages. So fingers crossed it is that. Because if it is, then they're really close together. You're like, you're like a postman. You just park up in a... Especially if it's, you know, in the town or whatever, town area. You just park up in a, in a street in an estate or something. You can do multiple drops from the van. Um, so I'm hoping it's that. If it's not, if it's like the same day or next day one, then it tends to be more spread out and you're driving between everyone. But... Either way, that's 45 quid for a three hour block. Shouldn't take me, worst case, is two hours really. Perfect thing would be it takes me slightly closer to north towards Walsall um, and it's bunched together, um, standard delivery, um, and I get it done in like an hour and a half. That would be perfect. It would be good if I'm home by five today. I can get a few things done for the weekend because I'm a. Uh, Way to North Wales to see my sons, so yeah, just get my invoicing done now. 
um, this evening and get my washing done and all that stuff. So that's the end of the week really. Um, I did look for a few jobs on the CX to see if the CX job came up it would be better. One did come up but I didn't get it. Um, I'm to be very selective of jobs now. I have to be close enough to me in Banbury and go into sort of West Mids. Um, so that's it. Uh, but the summary, which is to come. Right, still Friday. So one last on the run update. So yeah, did the Amazon block. Um, worked out quite well. It's a good block. It was the standard delivery, not like the same day or next day. So it meant it was really closely bunched together. Um, and it was all like in an outer suburb, something heights in Banbury. The only downside was there was a road closure on the main road in and out of this um, like urban, suburban area. And it split my area in half. So it probably added about 20, 25 minutes on a job because I had to do kind of half of it and then drive all around this big loop and there's loads of traffic doing that. Do the other half and then to get back Back that way as well so that was a bit of a pain but all not all bad it was like 10 miles 45 quid um, and then I did that and then I was just looking I thought just before I start driving home I will check the feed for jobs for Monday um, and I saw a Banbury job on there today and it was going to Birmingham it was only a small van job 39 miles loaded I was one mile from it so 40 miles I thought small van I go in at 35 and it had it said it was delivered by half five so it's getting like quite tight time wise um yeah and I got it so that was the Brucey bonus to finish the week <coughs> um just a tiny little package from an electrical place in an in industrial estate there really close to where I tipped earlier in the day to B11 Birmingham which is sort of like Acox Green this massive um electronics kind of looking place so got that done bit of a nightmare getting up there traffic and a nightmare getting across birmingham um but yeah all in all a good way to end a good week it's just gone really well this week but more of that in a summary right sunday afternoon now but can do a very quick summary just to make sure this video isn't too long like last week um yeah so full five days on the run um didn't get home any nights this week, but I spent one night in um, a guest house in Cambridge, and that was 40 quid for the night, um, which is pretty reasonable, really, for Cambridge. But that's obviously more than my standard costs, so yeah, take into account at the end. Um, so yeah, Monday, 105 and 247, so two jobs for 352 quid, which was the best day of the week. Tuesday, one job. 157 that was the worst day of the week wednesday 87 135 and 71 so three jobs for 293 for the day thursday two jobs 207 and 40 247 for the day and friday three jobs so it's 150 and then the 45 pound amazon block um amazon flex that is and and then the 35 quid small van job to around a week off the Brucey bonus job so that was 234 Friday so total for the week is 1,279 um, split across the five days um, so it's a full week this week it's £255.80 a day yeah so that's my best takings um, ever I think I think I did 1,100 and something in the old van like last summer when um, you know, there's quite low restrictions regards to COVID and it was quite busy on there. Um, certainly from what I've known, because obviously it didn't only started early on in 2020. So I had a very odd year to start. So I don't really know what it was like before that, um, before COVID. Yeah, so mileage, 1,294 miles. Um, so that's a pence per mile loaded and unloaded from leaving here on a Monday to getting back on a Friday of 98.8 pence a mile. So my target is a minimum of 85 all miles, 85 pence per mile for all miles. Um, so I'm really happy with them figures this week. Um, obviously my costs are going to come out of there. So I said 
my non-normal cost was that £40 one night in a guest house. Um, my fixed costs, I've done videos before but my fixed costs and it's pretty similar in this van to the old van. Um, I work off £20 a working day. That's based on working 46 weeks of the year, five days a week. Um, so 20, uh, you know, fixed costs are things like insurance, tax, um, CX membership, all that kind of stuff. Um, and then my variable um, on my non-fixed costs, I work off 30 pence a mile. That covers fuel, van depreciation, maintenance, which is obviously uh, maintenance, servicing, all that stuff. Which is obviously more is linked to the miles. That's why it's the variable. So you can do the maths from there. So yeah, pretty good week really. Um, yeah, I've kind of after it's been a real struggle this year, I would say um because of covid and stuff and the lockdowns january and february absolutely dead it was a real struggle then um but things are picking up now um have been the last few weeks and last like i say last week was a good week um so yeah living a dream this week compared to how it has been um just seemed to flow pretty well this week like the previous week just didn't seem to get going particularly the early part of the week but it's like that sometimes you get sometimes you get the rubbery green and sometimes you don't um and i've just got to see some really nice places this week like the trip up to carlisle and then in the guest house in cambridge had a good look around cambridge and then a couple of days after that i think it was a walk around liverpool and a docks albert docks in the evening that was really nice um i just see a nice countryside down down the south west-ish sort of around the Mendips towards Yeovil, beautiful scenery around there. And I didn't go to the South East this week, so yeah. No offence if you live in the South East and London area, but particularly more the London and Greater London area for me. It's nice not to go there, have a week off from going there, to be honest. Um, yeah, so that was a thing. Um, another good thing this week was my public liability and goods and transit insurance is gonna I've got like a month left and it's gonna um need renewing so yeah the um they rang me up um and it's gonna cost the same 170 quid for the two but the last year i was get and my current one i was two million public liability and then it's ten thousand goods in transit which is quite low i think particularly for a long wheel a uh, large van but it, it covered me for 25 grand goods in transit if for most of the parcel networks um but apparently they're going to change because it's just um it's cover sure um they're changing their actual insurance company the underwriter so it's going to stay the same at 170 so it's going to stay the same 2 million public liability but the actual cover is going to go up to 50 grand or for everything you know parcels or whatever um so that's a uh, good news really, as well yeah so I'll, I'll think i'll just renew with them to be honest they're pretty good guys uh a good guy i deal with cover sure in lowestoft i think it is a guy called eric i've had some good um advice of him before regards to motor policy on this new van where had a bit of a nightmare when i changed this van with the insurance if you you might remember if you're watching back then and he gave me some advice, which was kind of like good advice for me, but meant he didn't get my business. So that goes a long way, doesn't it? You know, when somebody gives you advice that it's going to kind of like almost cost them or rule out them getting their, your business for that at that time, you know. So, yeah, yeah, pretty sound guy. Uh, yeah, so that was it for the week. So just, yeah, good week, really. Good weekend. Um Back to it tomorrow, full week next week, and then the following week's another bank holiday. So, yeah, hopefully, this isn't a flash in a pan. <laughs> Be nice to do something close to this, but yeah, that is the week as ever. Any comments, questions, or tips, please put them below. And thanks for watching.